What is one of the best stretches for lordosis? And if you've watched my previous tutorial, you'll understand we've already talked about two. So this is now gonna be adding to that. So we're gonna be adding a third to that list. If you'd like help with correcting lordosis, please do click the link below, go through to my How to Correct Lordosis online 12 week program. We're gonna cover the stretch, the muscles, the key teaching points, because there are some important bits that many people leave out. And then we're gonna look at some other key steps. So number one, the stretch itself. Well, it's this stretch here, you've probably seen it before. So what we do is we have knee on the floor and then we hook the foot up on some kind of raised surface. As you can see here, I'm using a bench. Now this is primarily for a muscle called uh, rectus femoris. But depending on where you have tightness, you may have involved uh, TFL, but essentially we're looking at the anterior hip because when I talk about stretches, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial where we're talking about the deep front line, we're talking about an area of the body. And it's similar with this stretch. Now, you can add lifting this arm up in the air if you want to, to, uh, to increase the chances of getting psoas and iliacus, but I would recommend keeping it down uh, for the very simple reason we want to focus a little bit more on rectus femoris for this stretch. So that is the stretch and those are the three or two muscles that we're focusing on and the one area of the body. It's important to know where these muscles are. So we've talked about what the muscles are. Now we're going to talk about where they are. So we've got rectus femoris. Now that is on the anterior inferior iliac spine. So what does that mean? Well, basically here is the muscle right down the front of the thigh. So that's, in some respects, the location of it. Sitting underneath this muscle here, the sartorius, but essentially the anterior inferior iliac spine is down in there, and it's a bit on the pelvis that sticks out. So this up here is known as the uh, anterior superior iliac spine. So superior meaning above, inferior meaning below. So it's basically a bony bit that sticks out on the front of your pelvis below the uh, the the anterior superior iliac spine, so a bit of a mouthful. And then it goes all the way down into quadriceps tendon, through the patella, and into the patella tendon down here. So that is essentially where the muscle is, and because of its location, uh, or because of its uh, start and end, that is why we need to uh, bend the knee and hook it up on the, on, the, uh, on the raised surface, as it were. What we've then got is the TFL. The TFL is this muscle down the side here. Again, very closely associated uh, with hip flexors. Starts on the iliac crest, which is the sort of top of the pelvis here, and then ends in the IT band, as you can sort of see down here, and then you've got the IT band coming down here. And again, it's sort of crossing the knee, hence why it's another reason why we would bend the knee so we get a little bit more length out of the IT band, which will then put a little bit more length through the TFL. And that will, uh, in some respects, dictate which muscle it's going for because it will tend to go where the tightness is. And that's what I say to a lot of people with stretching, is go and find the tightness. Don't worry too much about let's just say perfect technique. We want to focus a little bit more on where the stretch is, go and find it, and then go and exploit where that tightness is and build it into the stretch as it were. Now the key teaching point that a lot of people uh, miss out, now we talked about this in the last tutorial, and it's maintaining a decent level of the pelvis. So it can tilt ever so slightly, but what you don't want it to do is sort of dump down so you've anteriorly tilted the pelvis and it's right down here because all you'll be basically doing is creating that lordotic curve in the spine and not really doing a great deal for that. So what we need to be able to do is tuck the pelvis. Now what does that mean? That basically means lifting the front of the pelvis, um, sort of pushing the, the back of the pelvis sort of forward and down a little bit. To keep the pelvis up, that will keep length in the TFL. The more the, the pelvis dumps down, the closer the insertion and the origin are to each other and therefore you're not going to be stretching the muscle as much. So we need to get good length in the um, uh, good length into the uh, muscle to be able to get the stretch that we need to be able to get the, uh, the, the, the effects that we want from it to help with our lordosis. Some other key points that come with that number one is foam rolling. So as you can see here, I'm my 
rectus femoris will start here and end here. So what I'm basically doing is I'm rolling right up the front of the thigh. Now why am I doing this? This will help get a bit of pliability into the muscle. So if you can imagine a stick of gum, stick stick of chewing gum, it's very sort of stiff when you first take it out of the package. But if you take it out of the package, put it in your mouth, chew it for a while, you then pull it out of your mouth, you pull it apart and it will stretch. So what we do, or what I ask people to do, is to foam roll through their rectus femoris, just like chewing the chewing gum, make it more pliable, then go into the stretch because you'll get so much more length out of it. If you just make it pliable, it will just be pliable. You won't necessarily get the length into it. So we put the foam rolling and the stretching together to first of all get the pliability, and then number two, get the length that we need from it. And second is the foam roll TFL. So you can see down here, I'm on my TFL, which is at the sort of the top, uh, the top, the front, and the, just to the side of my hip. So I'm going on to there. I'm foam rolling not only sort of very short movement up and down, but I will also rock across the fibers and sort of go backwards and forwards with the hip as well. So again, getting good pliability into the TFL because if I only foam roll one, one's going to become pliable, the other one's going to become stiff and that's going to restrict what I can get from the stretch. So if I can foam roll the, uh, the TFL, if I can foam roll the rectus femoris, I can get good pliability through them, I can then stretch through them and that's then going to give me that much more when it comes to getting into the stretch and also the ability to tuck the pelvis under because there's just that extra little bit of pliability in the muscle. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please do hit the like button below. If you've learned something new, hit the thanks button below. If you've got a comment or a question, leave it in the comment section below. And finally, if you want to watch more of these types of videos, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and you'll be notified when I release my next one.